Hey guys, Sean from Note Cycles. Join us today as we do the installation of the Diamond Audio MS HD 14 in our 2016 Harley Davidson Street Glide. Today, we are introducing a brand new product to the Note Cycles lineup. This is the Diamond Audio MS HD 14 with wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, and built-in DSP. We're gonna show you how to install it, and we're gonna go over all the features of this power-packed unit. So let's take a moment and go over some of the features and just take a general look at the MS HD 14. 6.8 inch screen, factory fit with the bezel already included on, and then on the back, we have a backup camera input, we have our microphone input, and some of our auxiliary inputs for aftermarket products. Factory plug-in, direct fit. You're gonna be able to use your factory Harley-Davidson USB that's in your, your cubby, radio adapter, and then three sets of five volt pre-outs. So you'll have front, rear, and sub for complete separation. It also has the ability to do Sirius XM satellite radio, Built into the unit is also a 40x4 built-in amplifier, as well as iDatalink Maestro, so you'll, you'll still be able to get all of your information on the screen from your motorcycle, as well as a 15-band graphic EQ, and again, the Diamond Audio Advanced DSP built-in. So now, let's go over the tools we're gonna need to remove the front fairing of your 2014 to 2022 Harley-Davidson Street Glide and Road Glide. T27 Torx, a 3 16th Allen. We're gonna keep handy our socket and extension for our Allen head set. A panel pop tool to remove any kind of plugs and clips. And then we're gonna also have some cutters to cut any wire ties that we may need to cut. So now that the tools are out of the way, we can start by taking off our front fairing. First thing you wanna remember is always cover your front fender with some sort of blanket, towel, fender cover, just to protect the paint from anything falling on it, a tool, a nut, a screw, a bolt. So now that that's covered, we're gonna go ahead and remove the first three bolts. They are a T27 from the top of the fairing to remove the windscreen. Now these three bolts, two of them are the same. One of them is different. The middle is a little bit longer and I'll explain why it's a little longer. Now, once that's loose, leave that in there to kind of hold the front fairing together after you remove the backside bolts so it doesn't just fall off. So now that we've removed our T27 bolts from the front part of the fairing, leaving our middle bolt in, we're gonna go ahead and go into the back side of the fairing and remove the four T27 bolts from there. And that you're gonna use your T27 to remove that completely. So now we got the right-hand side, we're gonna go ahead and remove the same ones from the left-hand side. Now that we've removed all four T27 bolts from the rear part of the fairing, it's time to go ahead and remove the windscreen and remove our final holding bolt. So you're just gonna slightly pull up. There are cutouts in your windscreen. Set that somewhere safe so it doesn't get scratched. And then holding on to the bottom of the fairing, go ahead and remove the final bolt. And then you'll be able to slide off the front of the fairing and then there is one connector with the headlight. Pop that backwards and then remove and set in a safe space. Next step in disassembly is removing the two T27s from the vent.
So now that your front fairing is off, we're gonna begin with the unplugging of the factory Harley head unit, as well as some of the gauges to get that stuff out of the way for, to be able to get at all our bolts. So first we'll start with the factory head unit plug, push in the pin, push toward the back of the radio, release. Then we're gonna have our factory USB connector. There is a small push pin, push it in, slide it out. Our factory antenna, same thing. These are all keyed to go in only one way. Slide that out of the way. And then our factory GPS antenna, same thing. One plug slides right out. Now that will more than likely be attached to the top plate. You can just leave that there for now. We're gonna go ahead and grab a small flathead screwdriver or a panel popper to remove the plugs from the gauges. So either end, the connectors on top, just lift up gently and remove the plug. And on the other side, the same thing, lift up gently and remove. Now the center one will have a lock on either side. So you just wanna kinda gently pull one side off, pull the other side off and that entire harness you can just move out of your way and put down. Once that's out of your way, you can get your antenna and just kind of get that out of the way like so. So now we have access to the bolts and screws that we need to get to to remove the factory radio. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove our four bolts that attach the top plate to the speaker pod with a 532nd Allen wrench. Once those four are removed, T25 Torx to remove the top from the radio, as well as beneath the gauges. And don't forget about the one that holds the pocket where the USB cable goes. Four that hold the top plate to the radio, three in the gauges. And then one right here that holds the pocket into the USB. Now we'll gently wiggle this out, holding onto the gauges because they will fall out. And then gently wiggle and remove. Once that's all done, we can take our 3 16 Allen wrench and remove the four bolts holding the radio to the chassis of the, of the motorcycle. Now that the last bolt is almost out, I'm gonna put some pressure on the radio just to make sure it doesn't fall. And then you will just lift up and remove from the bike. Now it's time to go ahead and put the Diamond Audio MS HD 14 into the bike. So now that all four bolts are tightened down for the radio, we can go ahead and start plugging in our power harness, our USB, our antenna. First, we'll start by plugging in the main power harness until you hear a click. Next will come the factory USB that is in the pocket. 
These are, remember these are keyed, so they will only go in one way. Make sure it clicks. And then we will find our antenna that we put up till it clicks. And those are the three connections that we unplugged out of our factory Harley Davidson radio back into our Diamond Audio MS HD 14. Now that we've completed the installation of the Diamond Audio MS HD 14, we can begin to start putting the bike back together. So first we're gonna start with putting and mounting the gauges back into the fairing. We're gonna start with just that top bolt because the bottom two bolts will connect once the top plate goes back on. Next, we'll put on the radio top plate. Making sure it gets locked into position. Now you'll notice that the new diamond radio has the same holes that line up exactly with the factory mounting plate. So now we'll begin to put the four bolts holding to the, the speaker pods, the bolt holding the storage container, and then the two bolts holding the bottom of the gauge pods. We'll start by putting the two bolts into the bottom of the gauge cluster. Next, we'll put the four bolts on the top to tighten down the head unit. And then last, we'll put in the four bolts connecting the top rack to the speaker pod. Then our last bolt will go in to hold the pocket that the USB is in. Once all your bolts are in place, you can go ahead and take your main harness, plug all of those plugs back in, and then plug the pins in. and then remount your antenna. So now that everything's back mounted up, our gauges are plugged back in, we're gonna make sure we have everything plugged into the MSHD14, our microphone, any uh, RCA connections, any camera connections, camera 12 volt power, anything like that, now is the time to do that. We will also want to plug in our 12 volt supply for our power antenna and then start getting some stuff out of the way and, and zip tied and put, put away. So and in the case of ours, we only have front speakers in ours. So we will not use any of the additional plugs that were behind our head unit. So we'll go ahead and pack those away between the pocket and the radio. And then we have some of the wiring here that we're just not going to use. So we're going to zip tie that out of the way. And again, in your case, you may or may not use it. Everybody's a little bit different. So prior to putting our front fairing on, we're going to go ahead first and install our fresh air vent using the two T27 bolts. Once those two are in, we can go ahead and grab our fairing. It may require you to have an extra person with you to kind of hold everything, plug it in, and get it mounted up. First thing you want to do is grab your front fairing, grab the middle bolt from the front fairing on the front, plug your headlight in, 
gently put the fairing into place and then slide the first bolt in and just turn it once or twice just to get it started so it stays. And don't forget, the long bolt goes into the top part of the fairing. Bolts are all tightened up on the rear of the fairing. Now we can go ahead and put on our windscreen and the last three bolts on here. Once those three bolts are in, your fairing put back on. We can go ahead and remove our fender cover or blanket or towel from the front fender, and we can begin to start playing with the new radio. So now that the Diamond Audio MS HD 14 is in and on, let's go through some of the features of the new radio. You have media files for USB, AM FM tuner, Bluetooth phone, Bluetooth music. If you slide, you have your EQ and your DSP, Android Auto, wireless, Apple CarPlay, wireless, your back camera or rear view camera, slide it again, you have all of your maestro settings, including your motorcycle info, your gauges, and then the auxiliary control. So let's go back and start at the EQ and DSP. So when you get into your EQ DSP settings, your first setting will be the global EQ where you can adjust or it has some default settings, jazz, easy, classic, or pop, or you can just kind of roll it yourself. Now, everybody's ear is a little bit different, so no two tunes are gonna be the same. And you can always just change it right back to flat. After the EQ, you have your balance in your fader where you can fade it in any way you, that you would like as well as a loudness button. And if you have something out of whack, you can always just hit center. It'll go right back to center. After fader and balance, you have your crossover settings. So you have your front, your rear, and then channel one and two, channel three and four, channel five and six, that you are able to adjust high pass filter, low pass filter, and slope. And that is fully independent on all the channels. After your crossover, you have your EQ, where you can, same thing, add and subtract from wherever you want on each channel. And then you also have a reset where you can keep it completely flat. Last on this screen is your time delay, where you can delay the time in which the music hits your ears in either centimeters, milliseconds, or inches and you'll see it change. So if you hit inches, now that's 40.16 inches or 102 centimeters or three milliseconds. Reset that back. Now we'll use our back button, which is just under our home button on the right-hand side. Go back out. Now I already did connect my phone. I am an Apple user. So we can hit Apple CarPlay, bring up Waze, our phone, music, uh, Apple Maps, our messages, our back to home, podcasts, news, audio books, and all of our accessories. I personally like Waze, so I just use Waze a lot. Now going back and hitting our home button, we can scroll over to our motorcycle info, tap that, and you'll be able to see what your bike is doing. So right now the battery is at 12.1 volts. Low beam is on. If I flip it to high beam, you'll see that the high beam indicator comes on back to low. And if I get out of this and go into my gauges, I have a full set of digital gauges that include mile per hour, voltage, RPM, intake temperature, and the twist grip. So going back out of that, our auxiliary control is the actual vehicle setup. We can go in and change some of the features in the Maestro itself or into the vehicle settings. 
So just showing what we want. So if we want to show the low fuel alert, that's on, or you can turn it off if you so choose. Uh, on the left hand side is a quick easy button to get directly to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So if you're in any screen, just tap the upper left hand side and you will jump as long as the phone's connected, you'll jump right to wireless Apple CarPlay or wireless Android Auto. Next button down is our microphone so we can make, make or receive Bluetooth phone calls, phone calls in Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Also, uh, ask for driving directions to a specific spot. Next one down is our power and or our mute button. Top right hand corner, we have our home button. Below that is our back button. Below the back button is our volume up and below that is our volume down. All of your hand controls will continue to work. So you have your volume up and your volume down your track up, your track down, your home button, and your back. So that's a quick intro to the actual using of the Diamond Audio MS HD 14. If you're looking to upgrade the audio in your 2014 to 2023 Harley Davidson Street Glide or Road Glide, you should definitely check out the Diamond Audio MS HD 14. We here at Note Cycles are really excited to have Diamond on board. To purchase any of the products from Diamond Audio, visit us at notecycles.com. And as always, have a blast out there.